Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. AW Grand Slam Night 1. It's in the books, and what a show it was. Kenny Omega, 30-minute draw with Brian Danielson. We can talk more about that in a moment, but this was one of the greatest TV matches of all time. Absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic match. We had MJF beating Brian Pillman Jr., Via submission, we had Malachi Black defeating the hated Cody Rhodes at 11 minutes after spraying mist in his eyes. Sting and Darby Allen beat FTR a couple of days ago. I'm not sure what show it was because I do 50 shows, but we were talking about who could, who should win, who should do the job or whatever. Well, the winner was Sting in every conceivable way. He was the star of the match. The fans just went crazy for this guy. He's 62 years old, and he wrestles, like, I mean, maybe 52. He's just the greatest. And that was... That had more heat than anything else on the show, with the exception of the opener. And then the main event was Britt Baker and Ruby Soho for the women's title. Women's championship match goes on last. And Britt beat her with the lockjaw after interference from Jamie Hayter and Rebel. And I would presume from here you could go to Ruby Soho versus Jamie Hayter, give Ruby Soho a big win, get some revenge. But that was a good match as well. So overall, just a a very good show. We're not going to do Rampage spoilers here, but I will say that the Friday show has Punk and Powerhouse Hobbs, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks versus Christian and Jurassic Express, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page versus Jericho and Hager, Hardy Family Office versus the Lucha Brothers, Anna Jay versus Penelope Ford, and Suzuki Goon versus John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. And this is, uh, I, I know people are going to think this is a spoiler, but it's actually not. This does not have anything to do with the actual uh, finish who won. But suffice to say, something happened and the fans at Arthur Ashe went home very, very happy. So uh, there is that to talk about. And tune in Friday to find out more. But the other thing I want to say very quickly about, about Omega and Danielson before we go to Mike is that Brian Danielson said in interviews, and keep in mind, Brian Danielson, he loved working for WWE. He has been very public about it. He wrote a public thank you letter to WWE. He loves Vince McMahon. He thinks that Vince McMahon is a genius. And, I mean, he was there. So anyway, uh, he loved it there. But he did say in other interviews that he hasn't been a professional a professional wrestler for a long time. And Brian Danielson had some great matches. Some great matches in WWE. But Brian Danielson, when he was on the Indies before going to WWE, his his gimmick was that he was the the best in the world. And, you know, prior to going to WWE, you look at the Observer Awards, and he was voted Best Technical Wrestler. He got many votes for Wrestler of the Year, et cetera, et cetera. He went to WWE, and while he had great matches, you know, there's a there's just things about WWE. There's There's the way they shoot it. There's what they want you to do. There's what they don't want you to do. There's what they don't want you to say. There are limitations on television. There are limitations on pay-per-view. And personally, as a fan, I mean, and I think many other fans as well, I don't think if you watch wrestling from all over the world that there were necessarily years where you thought that Brian Danielson was the best wrestler in the whole world. And the reality is... A lot of that was because of where he was and what they did and did not allow him to do. His first televised match here in AEW against Kenny Omega, the first night in, he's in the conversation for the best wrestler in the entire world. So I was pretty happy. I like this Brian Danielson guy. He's pretty good. Think he'll make it? And Kenny Omega was awesome as well, don't get me wrong. I mean, he was fantastic. They were both fantastic. But it is just amazing the difference in this Brian Danielson versus the Brian Danielson that we saw, the Daniel Bryan in WWE. And I even had people that said, you know, I, I was a 
I wasn't really a hardcore AEW fan, and I'm a diehard WWE fan, but man, I watched that match, and it does hit home. The difference between a wrestler given no limitations and these wrestlers in WWE that are all given limitations. It's kind of it's kind of mind-bending. But anyway, fantastic match. What more can I say? <laughs> hey, one of the limitations they put on themselves, which will always open up the door for there to be some sort of competition to them, is the fact that they don't really care about pro wrestling. They've never liked pro wrestling from day one. <laughs> They've never liked pro wrestling, at least as far as Vince goes. This is sports entertainment. We are so much more than what you see. And as Brian Danielson says and shows, as CM Punk said last night once again and shows, there's always going to be a place for pro wrestling, you know? That's the sad part when people take shots at amateur wrestlers and football players and stuff like that who get into pro wrestling where it's like yeah, WWE is going to take these guys. It's like, you know what? The, the sad part is a lot of those people were wrestling fans too. They just they just go into the WWE system and then get brainwashed into believing that that's what it's supposed to be and they don't have enough perspective. But for hardcore pro wrestling fans, of which there are always going to be lots of them out there, there's always going to be a yearning and a lust to be and to see things that WWE just refuses to give you. And last night there was a lot of that on AEW and I thought it was a great show. You can't it's hard to kick off a show like that and then, you know, have it go downhill and it didn't. You know, it was mentioned yesterday the match I was most interested in seeing and I was fired up about was FTR and Sting and Darby Allen. Brian, as a worker, I, I, to me, that was one of those matches I'm watching, and it, as great as it is, as great as it was for the fans, like FTR and, and Sting and, and Darby's a little different, but Sting and FTR are doing things that, like, minimal, minimal effort for maximum reaction, doing things that you don't normally see in FTR matches because they tempered it to who they were working with. It was just, I don't know, that match felt great. I, there was so much great little small things about that match. I loved it. And they moved everything they needed to forward. You want to see Dynamite next week. And before that, you want to see Rampage on Friday. And then you get the buzz that, that obviously no spoilers, that's coming out of Rampage. You know, again, they're hitting on all cylinders right now, in my opinion, and I think in everybody else's opinion, big star power, great matches, the show wasn't overloaded, good interviews that move things forward. The the only negative in some ways that you can say about AEW is they have an embarrassment of riches at their disposal when it comes to that roster, and not everybody's favorites or the match of the week or whatever is going to make it on there, so... It's just one of those things that if that's the biggest negative, you're you're doing okay. Well, you know about Sting, I mean, listen, I don't want to take anything away from FTR because I am never going to have another match. But, like, if Filthy and I had to have one other match, I mean, I'd go to FTR and say, pretend I'm Sting. Pretend I'm 62. <laughs> yeah. And I'd have, like, the best match of my career with these guys. But with that said, this is not the first time this has happened with Sting. Uh, the last time that he had an in-ring pay-per-view match, not like an actual in-ring match, not a cinematic match or whatever, which was not with FTR, this exact same thing happened. He stole the show. And he doesn't steal the show like Hogan steals the show, or like it's, he's trying to make it all about him. He's just one of four guys in there. But because he's Sting, and because he knows what to do, and everybody else knows what to do, like, you just watched the match, and as I noted, this had this had the second-best crowd reaction of anything on the show. And when it's over, you got Darby Allen in there. You have FTR in there. And when the match is over, it's like, my God, Sting's great. That's what you yeah. think when the match is over. Yeah. Which, you know, and, and hey, it's all, a lot it's all because of FTR and Darby and the other guys. But, <laughs> I mean, it's not like Sting can't do anything. No. It's amazing the amount of things that he can actually do. Genetic so anyway. Wonder. Yeah, look, genetically, he's great, did, did a great job, and hey, as we go to break, I want you to think about this during the break. Brian Danielson could have been your generational rival. I get a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Landstorm, plus hundreds of archived shows 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.